All right, well, I'll uh, ask my uh, two co-panelists to come on up. Uh, I'll start uh, by introducing Andy, Andy Tarzan. He's uh, the vice president with MetaWatch. And Andy, uh, you, I think you're vice president of partner development. He also, yes. a, in a former life, was an analyst and kind of a competitor. So I, I think I have some tough questions for you. Competitors? <laughs> I just thought we worked together. <laughs> well, um, and then we also have Stan Kinsey, uh, who is with Martian, the president of Martian Watch. There is a mistake, uh, as you, you may see in uh, the listing. Uh, these are not two guys with MetaWatch. One is with MetaWatch, one is with Martian Watch. And uh, I'm really excited. It's the only dedicated panel on, on smartwatches. Uh, it's an area that I, I am really interested in. I, I'm looking at learning a lot today. Uh, I want to ask a lot of questions. I'm going to also rely on you guys to ask questions. I like uh, when the audience gets involved. And to sweeten the pot a little bit, uh, for the best two questions asked today from you guys, uh, we're going to give uh, a watch, a smartwatch. So start thinking of some good questions. Now, um, let's sit down, guys. Make ourselves comfortable. And I am going to uh, ask each of you to give a, a 30 to 60 second uh, introduction to yourself. Andy, why don't you start? Sure. Uh, I'm Andy Tarzan. I'm with MetaWatch. Uh, joined about a month ago, actually, after leaving the analyst world, because um, I think Tony said it earlier that this is probably one of the most exciting areas. And I decided it's time to get off the sidelines and go jump in. And when you're ready, we're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, the um, uh, MetaWatch is a spin out from Fossil. We spent the last oh, almost decade as an organization building a number of different smartwatch platforms and digital watches that were Bluetooth connected. Um, what we have done in 2011 is our two founders actually bought it out from Fossil, spun it out into its own uh, unit, and it is, we are now distributed nationwide through Best Buy. Actually, they have exclusive uh, through the end of the year. And couple models, and we have uh, some very big plans that are going to come up for next year. Might even talk about those today. Great. And Stan, why don't you give us some, a minute to talk about yourself and Martian? Well, uh, Martian's more interesting than myself. Uh, <laughs> but my background is just business. I've had several companies. I uh, was in Disney early years and, uh, and started a company in virtual reality back uh, some time ago. Took it public. It was a wild ride. Uh, and had uh, then a wireless power company that we sold to Qualcomm a few years ago. So I've been an entrepreneur uh, for a couple of decades. Uh, Martian came to me uh, and that what I well, was kind of my own world of angel investing and uh, I uh, invested in Martian when it was Silver Plus and it was a, it was a medical alert company and they had a, a, a wearable uh, for seniors uh, that uh, you know these fallen can't get up they have a button that you press and it hooks to a base station and it calls from there uh, but amazingly we had a great product this company did I invested in it and uh, only to find out that the, the market was so confused by the products. I mean, the, the advertisement for Philips is, I've fallen and can't get up, just talk, call, push your button and talk to a friendly caregiver. Well, we could actually talk to the caregiver from anywhere within 100, 150 feet of the house where they had to be right by the base station, but the market didn't understand that. So we got out there, had a product, and uh, we talked to people and say, well, you can really talk to someone. And they said, well, we can talk to someone. And they didn't really even understand, not caregivers, not people, not the kids of the seniors. So uh, amazingly, a couple of years ago, uh, when I was in kind of brainstorming, well, what can we do with this thing? Uh, well, can we add Bluetooth to it? Uh, so that maybe if a younger senior were walking their dog, they could, they could have an alert. And uh, we talked about, could we maybe make it from a digital watch into something that the seniors would want to wear, a little bit more fashion. And uh, that became more of an analog design. Uh, and, uh, and then we found a way to, like how are all the cell phones doing with speakers? Our speaker was just sitting there on the, on the watch. We embedded it into a chamber. Um, and that left room on the top of the watch for an OLED display. And uh, uh, all of a sudden when we're doing this, still focused on the senior alert and younger seniors, Siri came out in late in 2011, and that was kind of the aha moment and say, hey, engineers, does, can, can you connect this thing like a headset uh, to, uh, to Siri and to my iPhone? Uh, this is the watch, uh, you're seeing it upside down, but you can maybe see there's a, a, an OLED display down below, but essentially a speaker and a microphone, and, uh, and, we said, and, and it worked. It was quite exciting, actually, that uh, you, know, you think of all the limitations of what you can do connecting, and all of a sudden, Here's Google and Apple spending tens or hundreds of millions of dollars on voice commands. And so we said, you know, the, similar to what Philippe was saying, I mean, people, you know, 15 years ago, you thought everyone's going to be wearing a headset, and they're not. 
Uh, some people do, but very few people do. But uh, a watch is kind of not too invasive. And so we thought the headset on the wrist, and that is, becomes the touch point into voice commands. You know, my phone's in my pocket. I could do 100 different things here. So that became the product. And now we, too, are launched. And we're out. Uh, mostly AT&T kind of launched us here. Uh, and we're in only about 100 stores. We just couldn't ramp up with production fast enough. But we're online, AT&T, Amazon, Best Buy as well. And uh, we're both having fun the holiday season. And very appreciative of Samsung's $100 million plus <laughs> campaign telling the world about smart watches. And, uh, and that's kind of the rising tide lift, has lifted all of us, I think. So uh, very pleased that Pebbles had the attention and, and Samsung and others. And it's an exciting, it is an exciting time. Great. Well, I'm going to start with maybe what seems like an overly simple question, but maybe it's the hardest question because um, people act as if smartwatches started, uh, you know, the tech, tech of blogosphere started with Pebble, but clearly, um, you know, there's first Linux watch, Linux watch around 2000. I mean, there's been calculator watches since the 80s. So I'm going to ask you guys, what are the functions that define a smartwatch? What defines a smartwatch, Andy? Well, this was, this was a huge struggle. Um, a little over two years ago, I was, I'm, I'm an avid diver. It's my weakness. And I'm on a dive trip, and I get a, get a note from one of the uh, chip companies saying, hey, can you go look at this market for us? And I'm thinking, well, this is interesting. I understand wearable computers. I wear my dive computer. It tells me where I need to go, how deep I can go, how deep I've been, uh, when I've yet again bumped into deco and have to uh, make a, a different type of uh, uh, surfacing. But what was, what was interesting was, OK, I think I understand this. And then as I started to dive in, that is the hardest question out there. Is it, is it Bluetooth capability? Well, how do you define that differently than a headset? Is it memory? Is it a communication ability? Is it, is it processing power on board? Um, there really is no clear definition there, um, except that it's on the wrist, and it has some sort of connectivity back to your phone. And I'll even throw out that uh, as we're looking at new products that are, are, have their own SIM cards in it, that connection to the phone may not even be there in the future. Yep. Stan, how, how do you define it? Do you define it different? Or are there any core functions? No, I, I don't define it. Uh, it. I mean, a smartwatch is anything uh, that uh, uh, provides you something uh, more, than, more than time, I guess, at this point. However, it's connected to, to the net, some kind of network and, and information. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of writers that uh, tend to think, well, this isn't the product. None of the products are here yet. They haven't changed the world. I, I don't know that there's going to be a smartwatch that changes the world uh, from that standpoint. But the question is, we all have different lifestyles, different needs, and uh, some want uh, passive information. Some want to be able to take action. And, uh, and so all of those fit into the category, and it's still being defined. And I think it's going to have 100 permutations uh, of what it is. And it, it will be interesting to see. I think everyone's waiting for Apple. What, what incredible expectations, if they really are doing it, of, of what will that, will that product do? Because expectations are very high. Frankly, I understand the Samsung product's pretty darn good, yet it's just been panned by so many people like, what's this piece of junk? I mean, I, I've had read so many bad things about it, yet this, the user surveys are like four star on Amazon or higher. And anyone I've talked to really likes the product. And it's quite useful in its simple fu core functions of uh, not forcing you to pull your phone out of your pocket all the time. And it gives you a lot of good, good data. So uh, it's all a question of expectations, I think, of, uh, of what you want this product to do. Expectations is a great word, because I think a lot of us come with their own expectations of what a watch should be. And I think a lot of people think it should be a fashion device. But so many of the early devices look like a big hunk of technology on my wrist. So, you know, what is, a, should a smartwatch be fashion first? Should it be technology first? Or is technology okay in that kind of alpha adopter world? And then do we need to kind of make this stuff actually look better over time? Andy, you want to start? Yeah, I'll jump in. The, the, um one of the things we're looking at today is, is there are huge expectations around what the big players are going to do. And what does that leave? Um, uh, where does everyone else fit within that world? Uh, one of the things that I look at is your DNA defines your future. Uh, and this probably builds on Philippe's conversation earlier. But the things that, that where you come from and how you view the world are how you're going to look at it. From, from us, we're, we come out of fossil. We build watches. We look at the watch market very heavily. It's a $60 billion market right now. And about 80 to 85% of that market is driven by products 
above the $500 price point. That's a huge number. Now, if you're creating, if you come from a cell phone company, you're looking at the features of a cell phone and saying, can I drive that to the wrist? If you're looking as a tech startup, you might be looking at, is this a platform play? And do we drive this into some new platform? That your DNA of where you come from and how you're looking at this market is really going to define what this is. Now, it's, the second part of that is this, this low end of that market is going to be very, very crowded. And a lot of companies are going to start looking at where does that market jump up to? And I will be, I'll be fascinated to see uh, what plays come out at CES. We know there's a number of new devices coming out. Uh, and if I'm jumping down your list, I'm sorry. I see you <laughs> glancing ahead there. <laughs> now the, um, one of the things that we're very clearly targeting is, is saying, look, if you have the big players in the market, and we're already hearing complaints on the Samsung $300 price point. That's a complaint that it's too expensive. Well, so the reality is, if you're a cell phone manufacturer, you can't sell a watch which would be deemed as an accessory more than the price of the phone. That leaves some huge opportunities in the higher end of the market. And that's, those are an area that, that we're clearly looking at. Stan? Uh, well, you know, we looked at it pretty simply. I mean, that, starting back when I explained a little bit of the history. Um, but one of the thoughts that struck me when I see all the digital versions and the flat panels is, uh, again, fashion uh, is important. Philippe talked about that as well. Uh, and uh, everyone's eye of what is fashion is, is different. And uh, it struck us that, I mean, if, I remember 20 years ago, you'd see popular mechanics, the car of the future, you know, a car that looked like the Audi A7 or something. And I remember back then, dang, that thing looks cool. Why don't they build that? Well, it turns out that, that for most people in the world, that uh, car of the future isn't a car they want to be driving right now. It really was, uh, was too sleek, too aerodynamic, and they weren't ready for it. And, in the same simple way, uh, you've got hundreds of millions of people wearing uh, wristwatches. I know that people think, well, the wristwatch has gone away. For the younger people, a lot of them it has. But for a lot of people, that wristwatch market's still pretty darn good, and it has an analog piece. So we thought, well, in 20 years, the digital square display may be what everyone wants to be seen wearing. Google Glass might be what everyone wants to be seen wearing. But right now, it's an unusual thing. And a lot of people are comfortable with analog. So very simply, we went back and uh, people asked me uh, early on, are you, are you guys afraid of Apple coming into the market? And I said, no, I'm not afraid of Apple. I'm afraid of Swatch putting notification and speech on a watch and selling it to, you know, because that's our game. That's where we're going. We, so we started first as if we were a watch company and then started adding features to it to make it more valuable. I mean, the first, the wristwatch didn't change the world. It just took a pocket watch from a pocket under your wrist. We're simply taking in two ways, passive data from your phone in your pocket onto your wrist, and then also allowing active participation through voice command. So, anyway, so that's the fashion thing. You know, I think it definitely plays in. It's yeah. you know, some people in this room, people probably see the digital display as incredibly cool because it's a very advanced group that lives in this world. But to a lot of people, that's not the case. So, we, no matter how small that niche is for analog, that's the one we decided to go with. You, you said you worked backwards and started to add functionality. When you look at some of the, the most popular wearables today, I would venture to say they're, they're single function devices and they're, that they're fitness trackers. In the surveys I've done, uh, fitness trackers are by far more adopted than any other wearable today. Uh, but I think maybe some of the criticism of the, the Samsung watches, it was a Swiss army knife. I mean, it literally packed everything in there. They got a camera. Um, besides actual phone functionality, they had pretty much everything else packed in there. So uh, either one of you, I'd be interested to know, do you think a smartwatch should be focused and kind of do a couple things really well or be a Swiss Army uh, knife or, or is there room for, for both? I'll jump in there. There's, there's four market segments I looked at when I was first defining the market. The first was the whole series of standalone devices. And we've known them. We've had various trackers. We've had various uh, other devices. And we've had these for 20, 30 years, uh, from calculator watches up to pedometers. Uh, the second I was looking at was uh, starting the evolving verticals. That's kind of where the mar I see the market today, where we have these services. Fitbit's done an incredible job of, of get linking that device to help allow you to track um, your activity. Uh, and then the next phase, and where we're really starting to hit this today, is, is what I'm looking at is this, these horizontal platforms, uh, very broad platforms that allow you to do many different functions. Um, I, in that category, I'm kind of throwing body apps 
as, as a concept there. Uh, and then the fourth, and it's a reality that we might hit at some point here, is, is these integrated realities. It's the, does Google Glass go mainstream? Um, to your question, though, do we need to have all of those functions straight in there for consumer success right now? And the answer is a resounding no. You know, I came on MetaWatch to look at partner development. And part of my job was going out and looking at consumer usage and behaviors and going across an entire spectrum of what is possible on today's platforms and tomorrow's platforms. And the reality is it hasn't changed. Uh, the core behaviors of consumers hasn't changed in hundreds of years. In every tech platform I've ever looked at, you've ever looked at, news, weather, sports, email, social media, these, these were resounding uh, from connected DVD players to every platform I've ever looked at. OK, that's a given. You need to have those types of functions. But do you have special, specialized offerings? Um, one of the things I landed last night at LAX, and I wanted to see what the score of the Cowboys game was. It's kind of a sad thing that I actually saw it, because if you saw the score, my hometown bears whooped my Cowboys. And uh, it, was, it was just a complete spanking. But I was able to check as soon as I landed, look at my watch. I had the live score there. I didn't have to go into my phone. I didn't have to bother anything. It was just in the background. And do I see an offering around, hey, is it NFL? Um, we've just rolled out fantasy sports this week. These are very specific offerings. Even though we have a very horizontal platform, these small offerings allow us to hit very tiny niches. And I, I think the, uh, the, the term I, I heard from this really bright analyst that I have a lot of respect for, um, he, he talked about riches and niches in his report. Uh, when did you release that? <laughs> the best analyst of all time. Best analyst of all time. <laughs> in my humble opinion. Um, by the way, I do need to publicly give you credit. Years ago, we had a debate on iPad success. And um, yeah, hands down, you had us beat on that one. So and You said it was a fad? Uh, <laughs> I didn't think, I, I'm not sure if I said fad, but I didn't see, I didn't see the eight million I think that you were calling for. I think we put yeah. about two and a half. And yeah. So, okay, so hands down to uh, Mike on that one. Great. Stan, you know, it seems like a lot of the criticisms I see of, of smartwatches, people are pretty dismissive sometimes. Not everyone, but some people say, oh, it's just um, Apple or whoever, tech giants coming up with another category because mobile phones are starting to plateau. Um, I have a smartphone. What, this, I don't need this. It's just another, another device. Um, how would you answer those critics? You know, I, 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 I too think that the smartwatch is, is here to stay. I don't really, I don't know that anyone knows uh, if one uh, philosophy of what that should be is going to take hold. Uh, whether, uh, and everyone waits for Apple, or are they going to come out with uh, just an incredible product that just puts all of us to shame? I, you know, no one knows that. Uh, but um, uh, I, think the, I think the market will tell. Uh, a, I think, the reason I think it's there is that uh, we didn't used to check our phone. I mean, some, I, I guess the way this started, some, some blogger wrote that you check your phone 150 times a day and, and it's kind of stuck. I don't know if that's the number. Some could be 50, because some could be 500. But the point is we do check our phones quite a bit during the day. I mean, most of us sit in a room like this, ready, and a vibration happens, we're going to check it, we're going to see whatever, you go through your life. So, there's no question that I, th I think the killer app is notification just because of that. That's the one thing that happens all the time, multiple times an hour, is you get something. And we're, we're adding to ours, love it if we get the IP on this, uh, but uh, vibration patterns even. So through a Morse code type thing, you can actually set the pattern of vibration to tell whether you just got a, a note from Facebook, Twitter, post, uh, you know, email, SMS, whatever, so you'll know what it is. For me, uh, when I get these messages, I mean, it's quite handy. We. Some of us talking at breakfast. Uh, and almost all of us that are in the smartwatch business have, have our stories of an important meeting, an important call, with Brian over here from uh, uh, College of Mines uh, in South Dakota, talking about an important meeting he was in. And he was the only one with a smartwatch on. And uh, no one would have interrupted, but an important, urgent call came through. He was the one that got it because of his watch. Uh, I think people will find there's value to that. So the notifications to me is the killer app. Uh, beyond that, uh, Philippe seemed to be focused more on the passive, uh, getting information and being able to make use of that. There's also, again, ours is as much uh, active as it is passive, meaning take commands, use commands, things like that. Will that take hold? I, I think it will. You know, you may, I don't know if your topics get into home controls and things like that, but that's kind of the next direction. A lot of people think that uh, that's where Apple's going to go with it. Uh, I noticed there's, they really seem to profile 
uh, Phillips Hue and Nest quite nicely in their stores. They get a lot of shelf space, um, you know, so the natural thing is they're going to be able to say, uh, Nest turned my temperature to 72 degrees and uh, nothing else is done. You don't have to go to your phone or anything. I think the home controls is a whole new direction. So I, obviously we're in voice, we believe in voice, we think it's the touch point into the life of uh, consumer of the future, into the computer that you have in your pocket. Um, you don't, in a situation like this, obviously you don't use it, you don't use it out in public, but there's a lot of times when you're driving or in your home where that, that may take place. But again, there's so many ways to go with this uh, that the fun thing is it's a free market. No one, there's not a government telling us, here's what you're gonna put on your, your smartwatch. I mean, we're gonna live and die by it. You know, some companies are gonna make it, make it big, some, some are gonna go away. And in the end, you're gonna see what, what the consumer wants. It's a great system. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with you. We agree on a lot of things. Um, but when I look at the killer app of the, of the watch, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, the, of this in three ways. Now, I'm not in voice. Um, but when I look at this, I look at time as the synchronizer. And we think about how this country was built. And what's the icon of American growth is the railroads. And we think of the conductor always looking at his pocket watch and having this time as a synchronization. And what this allows us to do is think about the schedule and start to think of where we're going. And from, from my mindset, when I start to have my schedule right here on my wrist at a glance, my whole day's uh, visible, I can start to think of not just what time it is and where I need to be or a notification, but I can start to think of what are my objectives. I move from the logistics of time, the logistics of where do I need to be, what, um, what time, uh, and into what are my objectives. And so that I look at is, is ambient information. Every time I glance at my watch, I pull up a little bit of extra something. I'm just checking the time, and in that second, as in yesterday, I was getting uh, NFL scores. Not the live updates, but just, hey, here is the current score. Silent and at a glance. That type of ambient information mixed with notifications, I think, is, is, is where the opportunity for our organization lies. Now, beyond that, then, um, I have my ambient info, I have my time, um, I have notifications, then the ability to, to start to act and think about the objectives I want to come. But I don't know we're that far off, excuse me for interrupting, but I mean, I, mean, I put sports scores and calendar in notifications. You know, if you get, uh, if you, in, maybe yours is seeing it whether you want to or not versus adding an alert to it. But, uh, but, but it is information, it, it's coming to you. Now with, uh, uh, with Android, it, it's been that way for some time. Now with Apple adding BLE capabilities with iOS 7, hundreds of different notifications can be sent uh, to your device. So uh, I would say sports scores and other things uh, are part of that. So I don't know that we're that far off, is what no, I'm saying. No. I, I, you know, and, and but as far as taking it. this to a new paradigm in life, you're, you, you're more intellectual than I am. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know if it takes me anywhere yeah. else in life, or uh, deeper I'm, in thought, or now I can live at a higher level. But it, it definitely is valuable information, I think, and well, easy it, to get to. And I'm looking at it from a, from a uh, how much do I, can I control my life? One of my big, big milestones this past year, I, I turned 40. I mean, Ooh, this is my 21st. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I know. It's a, it's a, it's a tough time. <laughs> um, I still act like I'm 12, so I, I, count, I balance it. Crisis is what you're uh, no, no, not quite. But <laughs> one of the things I noticed was my kids, when I get home, are all buried in screens. Yeah. And there was no communication. As we sit there, we're lost in these screens at all the time. And so we're, we're starting to interact. I've, I was trying to find a way to say, look, not only is it, am I studying this at work, but I'm seeing this in life, that this opportunity for us to connect as people and not be distracted. Um, the, the hundreds of beeps, dings, and, and things that are hitting my phone constantly, not every notification is built equal. So part of what we did was build in some filtering that you could very easily slide. As soon as a notification hit your phone, the first time we'd send it to your watch. Um, beyond that, hit a slider. I don't want that. Uh, I, it's, it's my, the need for me to, well, I tested on Android the need for me to know that there's an open Wi-Fi network nearby is absolutely irrelevant. So it's counterintuitive to me, to some people, that adding another screen to your life would lessen it. But what you're saying, you're, you're saying the, the watch can be the first line of defense against constantly having to look at another screen in terms of, and, and allow for less digital distraction. Who knows the meme? All the people walking down the street, looking at their phone, saying, who's afraid of the zombie apocalypse? <laughs> I can't be the only one. I need some hands out here. Okay, mercy hands. <laughs> the, uh, that's exactly what we're looking at. We know, um, as great as the phone is, and I love my smartphone. Um, I love all the smartphones I've been carrying. The, uh, the challenge is we can get too lost and distracted and lose sight of what's important, what, what matters most to us. And so there is a, there is a limiting factor to how we let that, that technology uh, enter our life. I want to take a quick poll because I should have done this. I want to know how many people have a smartwatch. 
Okay. How many have a glass, a smart glass? Oh, glass. Eh, watches are winning a little bit. How right, many I'm, have a watch? How many have a watch? How many have a watch in general? Okay. How many have more than one watch? <laughs> great. This is a this is a great yes, point. This is this is how we do market research. The, the two answers. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start taking audience questions. Uh, so actually, the first person to raise hand is the guy at the very back. Uh, go ahead. Did everyone hear that? So the question is how carriers will try to uh, plan to implement services around smartwatches yeah, and monetize? And whether you guys see more of a cloud connected device or maybe a, more of a Dick Tracy style, you know, evolving faster. Clearly we have SAR and there's things that mechanically we can't really need to uh, overcome with the industrial design. So I mean, those are the three areas we're going in. Do you guys have any insight on whether the carriers are, are focused on that, whether they plan on, you know, rolling that out and pushing I can, I, I can only say that we launched with AT&T at their flagship in Chicago. Uh, they see us very simply as a way to make more money, uh, another accessory. Um, you know, we depend upon cloud services, those by Google, Apple, others, uh, for voice, uh, voice command. Uh, we are, I mean, been, people like the idea, I mean, with, uh, among other things we can do, you can have a conversation on your wrist. And so people picked up on that. As a matter of fact, we really had to downplay that direction uh, heavily. It's a little off tangent from your question, but um, they, we went out with it initially. And uh, you know, the tech crunches and all of those guys, doggone if they wouldn't just go out on a street corner in New York City and say, I'm trying to call my wife. I'm really having trouble hearing. She's having trouble hearing me. This thing isn't very good. I mean, they would never use the speakerphone on their smartphone for, for that service. It's not meant for that. So we've completely downplayed the Dick Tracy aspect of it, talking about voice commands when driving in your home, things like that. Uh, on a ski slope, then you, you, know, you could uh, make a call, things like that. But uh, I don't know that they're going deeper. We have talked to at and uh, back-end group, and they've got some dreams. Uh, we actually declined to get involved in R&D with some of the directions, uh, only because we knew we had an objective and that was going to take us on a tangent. But I mean, they're thinking about a lot of cool stuff. Uh, that would expand where the whole smartwatch thing uh, goes, even from where it is now. Uh, I don't know if that answers it, but I mean, it, it's uh, as far as direction with, uh, with the main carriers, I, I think right now it's just a, an, another accessory, like a Bluetooth headset or, um, or a, a phone case. You know, can, they, can they make a good margin and sell it, and do people want these things? Well, and some of the some of the conversations I've had uh, with carriers, uh, and it's with, certainly within the particular groups I was talking to, um, they'd love to slap a SIM card on this and charge an extra fee for this. Um, but I want to go back to your initial questions, identifying three markets. I think there's another market here, and this is this is my my fossil DNA coming out and building watches. Is what happens when the traditional watch players start to feel threatened by smart watches? Everyone here has been very focused on the technology, um, and back to your earlier question: is is this a fashion play? I think this is a, a, a affordable lux question. That market above, 20, above 500 to under 2,500 dollars, that there are certainly some areas to play uh, for the smartwatch, and they will they will be coming out to this, this market within the next year, year and a half. Ma'am with the white sweater. That's you. <laughs> I have two questions for either. No, nope, only one. <laughs> you trying to win two watches? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, uh, to the mom community, did you say? Yeah. Well, on the first one, uh, I will say we haven't, uh, we haven't let go of that uh, concept of senior alert. We did table it because uh, that niche is so difficult to break into. I never saw a more, from my business uh, experience, a more difficult market to break into than that senior alert thing. They got that, they got that Reader's Digest covered. 
And uh, people think it's great, $30 a month, and you'd think you could break into it, but it's difficult. At the same point, no question, we are looking at uh, SDKs and a lot of different uh, uh, permutations of our watch. Originally, it came with two buttons. Our, this, this is actually a spinoff of our, of our uh, senior alert watch. One button you could call 911, and one you call a series of friends, family, or you could call a call center. We, this, we could change the operation of that watch to still enable that, maybe through an app and an SDK, and an, uh, one would be able to change their watch functionality to become senior alert. So we are looking into that. As far as the mom watch, we're only looking at it from the same standpoint as every other consumer right now as, as a, a useful device. I mean, I, you know, with, uh, with, you know, if you look at our original Kickstarter video, we launched on Kickstarter as well. You know, so someone cooking and setting a timer for 30 minutes. I actually do use this thing when grilling steaks or something. I'll push the thing and say, set timer for seven minutes. And it's, and it's pretty cool because my hands are filled and, and it does it, you know. So I, there are useful things there as far as moms. I mean, moms are busy. They set calendar events. They've got kids in their arms. They've got all kinds of things. So that's how we look at it. We don't look at it as any special functionality other than any other consumer with a lot going on. And maybe one time out of 10, it's easier to answer a phone call on your watch. Maybe one time out of 10, it's easier to make a calendar appointment using your watch or set a reminder uh, in the car or something uh, rather than scribbling something on a paper. So, I mean, again, these guys are intellectuals. We just look at basic <laughs> needs and say, well, that looks cool. We'll do it. So we, we add these things to it. And over time, we'll learn what, what features really work and which do not. And hopefully, we can go after that senior market again. And from our perspective, we're not touching the senior market. That's just, it's not, a, it's not an area we're playing. We want to build beautiful watches. Uh, and to the mom market, I think one of our challenges right now is to build a, a, a beautiful, glamorous watch, one that, that drives the emotional response. Um, it's not a product we can do with something this wide. It's very difficult to, to appeal to the female market um, based off the width of our current watches. That may change in the future. Ma'am? I love you. <laughs> I can think of no better segue into what some of what we're doing right now. Uh, and, and that's the, there may have been an, announce, um, an announcement everyone had, had seen if you've looked at MetaWatch lately. Uh, article came out a few weeks ago that we are working with Frank Nuovo. Frank Nuovo is, is the Johnny Ive of Nokia, or I guess as, as uh, our CEO likes to say, um, Johnny Ive is the, uh, is is the Frank Nuovo of Apple. Um, at one point, one of every three phones in, um, carried uh, from Nokia uh, was designed by Frank Nuovo. He stepped up earlier this year and said he'd like to do some work in the smartwatch market. And so you're going to see us rolling out designs, very special, highly beautiful um, watches uh, that are going to appeal to that emotional factor. Um, yeah, to your to your point, yeah, exact. We are very focused on on that market. We are going to have some some very interesting products coming out that are trying to drive that that emotional response. We want to be a watch that is beautiful and has some smarts versus just a smart watch. Tell me about the experience when you bought your acrylic bracelet. Where did you buy it? Needless markup. As my wife says, needless markup. <laughs> it was, no, 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 but it was a beautiful experience. It was, it was this great consumer experience laid out to you, and you, you had an emotional attachment to that product that you were willing to spend money with. If we think about the watch market today, and again, I'm, I'm looking at this from the watch perspective, Watches are emotional attachment. They're an investment that you're making. And the function of what it does is, um, it, it, as we look at adding intelligence, it needs to enhance that experience, enhance the, the, those functions that can drive a better overall experience with the watch. We're not, uh, from that perspective, we're not trying to do everything to everyone. Back to your earlier question, it's not about having a Swiss Army knife. It's about finding the right 
connection and the right experience for the consumer in that particular channel. If, if I could answer that, my, my view is very simply, it's too early. Uh, people don't know companies, they don't know products, you, just like Martian, just like if you had uh, electronics to your acrylic uh, band, even if they love it, they're wondering, will it still be working three months from now? And no one's going to invest more than $100, $200 on something that they fear might break or might have functionality they don't care about. You know, in five years, as I said, the market will shake out what features and functions are worthwhile. They'll determine which manufacturers have, uh, are dependable and have quality products. And to your, your point, Andy, I mean, you'll see $1,000 uh, wristbands that have electronics in them, but from a company they trust and with features that they know they can use. That's my view. I think the market will change right now what everyone's willing to throw $100, $200 up to ours. Ours is a $300 watch, $250 to $300. And, uh, you know, it's selling well. It's good. People look at it, I think, partly because, uh, again, for us, we're an analog watch first, and we look a little like a regular watch. So, they, you know, people are thinking, well, I'll give it a go. And, uh, and even if I don't use the voice command, even if I don't use notifications, it's still a watch I can use. Maybe that's the rationale. Um, because the clock keeps, keeps going even when it runs out of, out of power. Uh, the, the, it's independent batteries. So uh, that's helped us from some degree. But I think mostly people, it's just so new, people don't even know if they'll use the darn thing. So you, it's pretty hard to invest $1,000 when you're going to do that. Before, before we go on to the next question, we we're, were kind of chatting on this earlier. Um, I, I think Philippe had, had a very interesting point of what's the right battery life? Um, and is it, I think he said, a month or a year? And I, I, I wanted to... <laughs> Kind of give the, the, the background from fossil or from the, our fossil days and what our team had found in developing a number of watches, and that is a month is actually too long right now. Uh, part of our design philosophy is, is hitting the five to seven days that we're at, because then you actually need to recharge and you'll know where your charger is. Until we can hit a day of wireless charging or I should say um, uh, capturing um, some of the, the, the Wi-Fi recharge uh, models, um, which unfortunately we can't do because we're, we're wrapped in metal, in, in precious metal. But what we found from experience was if we went beyond seven days, there was an incremental increase in how many people lost their chargers. So if you, had a, if you create, when, we, um, when the team created products that lasted a month, people would lose their charger because they weren't using it enough. So it's just kind of an, an odd statement there that uh, it'd be great. Ideally, I would love a product that I never had to recharge. We just don't live in that world. And we look at it today of, of what is the battery chemistry. It isn't changing. Everything we look at has a cost. And how do we hit that five to seven day? Michael, could, could I reverse this? And I want to get my, the one poll question I wanted to ask today. This is a good segue. I'm going to ask it. OK, so which, if you had a smart watch, which would you rather have? A watch like ours right now that you, I'm not selling this. I'm saying we've got an option for the next generation. Do we want to continue to use a micro USB, which is now pretty pervasive, and you've got seven of them around the house and in the office, and you can charge any time? Or, but it, it, it makes it more difficult to make the watch waterproof. Or would you rather have a non-invasive kind of touch point uh, charging system where there's one cable that you have, and to your point, if you lose it, you better go buy another one or you're, you're out of luck for a while. Uh, so which would you rather have the waterproof with a custom cable only used for that watch or micro USB that you have everywhere? Could yes. I ask? The first option is micro USB. Show of hands. Uh, and not necessarily waterproof. Water resistant, but not waterproof. Higher a little, please. OK, and how about for the custom uh, uh, charge point that does become waterproof? So right. it looked like micro went a little bit. Um, Thank you, you guys very much. may have had some input to the next uh, next watch. I'll, I'm going to ask. Go to this. That's this, a know. big discussion uh, for all of us. I think. Go ahead. So my question is: We've talked a little bit about definition of smartwatch sure. in the category, and I think we can all agree that it's a broad definition. Some level of connectivity, perhaps. Um, you guys represent a certain segment within that large, uh, broad segment. My question is: Looking at the next five years, do you have a gut sense as to? how critically important processing power will become in these in this in this segment. You know, these, these low power smart sensors versus the same versus the So the question is uh, how important is processing power in the smart watch segment over the next five years will there be an arms race like there is in, in smartphones in terms of processing well, from my perspective if I get into a processing power discussion, that's not the market I'm playing in. 
I'm playing in beautiful smart or beautiful watches that have some intelligence to them. So processing power is, is, is sort of a meaningless thing to us. Stan, do you have any thoughts on that? I think it'll happen. I, I do think it'll happen. I think uh, the idea of, uh, of cards, they'll have SIM cards. Uh, there'll be special connectivity that uh, uh, the watch will maybe sense when it's near your phone. And if away from your phone and still on your wrist, the, the connectivity will switch over to your watch so that you can make calls. You're out surfing or whatever. You don't want to take your phone. It's waterproof. I mean, it's going to go everywhere. It's going to go everywhere. So yeah, there will be a lot of processing power on the watch in the future. Whether we go there, whether Meta goes, I mean, I, I don't know where we're going to go. Uh, right now, it's not necessary. Uh, it's not available. The batteries, all those kind of things are not there. But I can tell you, a lot of people are thinking about that stuff. So, Ma'am, in the front. So the, the Google Omate product? Yeah, the, the Google Watch. The, the Google, Google Watch. Watch. Oh, okay, Omate's a different product. They, they acquired uh, Swim. So, the, the, so if Google comes out with the smartwatch, how do you see that impacting the, the, the smartwatch segment in general? Yes. Okay. I look at it as, uh, this way. 89 and 97 are two very important numbers to me. And that is, I went, I went to the mall last week, walked into a jewelry store, and I said, how many watches do you have? Um, there was 89 men's watches in one store, and there's 97 in another. I think an assortment to creating a category is a very important thing. So as many players as can be there, great. I, mean, it, I don't look at Martian as a competitor. I look at them as, as both playing in the same market and trying to help our, our <coughs> the fact that we're in the same market actually helps both of us. And more players is good. Now, that's not to discount that when the big players enter, Apple, Google, um, next generation Samsungs, everything uh, coming out, those will certainly play. Uh, as, as I said, we're going to go play in a very different space than where they're at today. I have a question. I, I mean, in the smartphone space, it's boiled down to like a few platforms that hardware guys build around. So Android, iOS, Windows is trying to elbow their way in there. Is the smartwatch space going to be similar in that you're going to have a few dominant underlying software platforms that uh, foster app ecosystems, for example, or are people going to go and roll their own? I mean, is, or is that impossible because app developers can't develop for a thousand different platforms? Any thoughts on this, guys? Well, you're talking to two guys who both are working on SDKs. Right, right. <laughs> so you'll, you're going to know our, our answer there. The, um, <clears throat> the way I see this is there are platforms we're going to develop for, but what is the best platform for an app? Is it your watch or is it your phone? And from our perspective, we, we work with every app in your phone. Very simple. Any notification you have, fantastic. If we extend that out, we can then put that ambient information down to the watch. Um, so we believe very clearly that for the short term, this market will be driven by the apps that you use on your phone. Any thoughts, Stan? Uh, once again, I just think it's an exciting time. and. Uh, uh, we're gonna. It'll be interesting to see how it, it pairs out. I mean, I think we're all trying a lot of things. I own a Pebble. I just downloaded the seven-minute workout on it. It was fun to use uh, for that seven minutes. On the other hand, I didn't realize it, but when downloading the app, the app runs itself too, and it tells me what is going on. So I'm wondering which is easier: to set the phone there and just listen to it, say, "Okay, squats are next, ten seconds, nine seconds, or whatever," or, or watch it on my. I don't know. Um, you know, it's all, all these things right now are new, experimental, and uh, I, I hate to be a broken record, but I, I think it'll be interesting to see you know, what uh, functionality we really think is valuable mm -hmm. on the smartwatch and what is easier done just with an app. I mean, I see early on, I don't mean to not, I, again, I'm with you. I, I support every smartwatch maker. Love it that Pebble's out there, you guys, uh, Samsung. But I looked at iMWatch, the Italian watch, and I see uh, their video with people looking at photos of flipping through the watch looking at photographs. I'm thinking to myself, this doesn't even make sense. They're, he's sitting with three people on a park bench showing pictures of the family on here. When his, his phone, hey, your phone's in your pocket. You can, see, you can see a photo a lot better if you just pull your phone out. You're sitting on a park bench. You're not on a train. You're not someplace in the car. So the point is that there's a temptation, like me with my pebble right now, 
and, and I do, I must say I'm guilty of it here too. There are times when I'm using this just to see, is it fun to do or whatever. Two years from now, what will be fun and what will be actually valuable? Will I be doing the seven minute workout using my smartphone there and forgetting the Pebble? Or will I find that Pebble really uh, is great for that application? But I think right now it's, it's gonna be very difficult for every product to be great for all applications so it becomes a personal thing of what do you use it for and, and how does it help your life? Uh, well, very back. Uh, oh, you, go, just go a little go bit quick. further. With that 89 and 97, yep. the number of smartwatches out there, when I asked how many watches does everyone have, most people owned one, one watch, also owned two. And so do we think, <clears throat> clearly we don't think that this is gonna be the only watch on your wrist. You may own other watches. Um, you will certainly, if you're a watch lover, you're gonna own other watches. Is it gonna be one smartwatch for the rest of your life? No, we, we see a, a place where there are going to be multiple styles, multiple designs, and multiple functions. Um, in some cases, health and fitness. I was looking at one the other day, I'm like, that would be fantastic for this app. It's not an area that I want Meta to go into, um, but it is, it is something that we see. We see that opportunity for say, look, we work with these other players. We don't have to own your wrist at all times. Dark jacket, very back. Did you guys hear the names? I didn't hear yeah, the names. Yeah, Casio, G-Shock, okay. and, and uh, uh, the Cuckoo Watch. Okay. I'll just speak first. Cuckoo, I thought uh, it was a cool concept, uh, uh, an attractive watch. Um, and uh, I guess I just felt, for me with notifications, I mean, at one point, I mean, there was a debate. We were going to come out with, our, with Martian uh, without an OLED display. I mean, you get a vibration knowing you'd get a notification. And you could say, you know, read text or whatever, but you had to be able to know that that's what it was. And it, we, we absolutely passed uh, to the next step and said, we've got to have an OLED. We've got to know if that's an important notification coming through or not. You've got to know if it's calendar, if it's email, whatever. So uh, that, that debate we had, and I haven't used Cuckoo, but I think if I got a, uh, an icon that said uh, email or text or whatever or a call, I'd want to see a caller ID. I'd want to see who that was from. So that was what pushed us, but maybe some don't need it. You mentioned something about the phone doesn't have to be near the watch. I, did you say that? I, it was hard for us to hear what you were saying. I was saying that they solve a very specific function, which is like the problem, the, the problem that it solves is very specific and very obvious, which is, you know, what happens when your phone is in your pocket for a woman in her purse? You know, it solves that specific problem, so it's an easy value proposition for a customer to understand. Oh, I get it. It's going to help me not miss that phone call from my dad or my uncle or whatever. So, I mean, but it has a two-year battery life, which I think is probably the most interesting part, because I think, you know, in a day-to-day -day life as a consumer, charging things is already a hassle. Now you want us to charge more devices. So, I mean, in that, so I, we were talking about battery charging earlier. You said five to seven days, where it's used the last two years without a single charge. So that's why I was just wondering. That's clearly a fantastic feature that they have, that two-year charge. I mean, that would eliminate years. You wouldn't worry about your... Uh, uh, you just get a new this. watch every year. Well, you get a new battery. So, yeah, I, but that's a great feature. All I'm saying is, they, you know, for us, the offset of looking, they were, they were out at about the same time. And uh, uh, we questioned whether consumers would like notification without knowing who that's from. Uh, but also, it, I think, maybe I'm misunderstanding your question. I think you were implying that they could do that without the phone being nearby. But I think they need the phone uh, just like, the only thing we have, for example, and you can do, I mean, some, if they have some degree of processing on the watch, a calendar event, for example, or something uh, in advance, can be set, downloaded to the phone in advance, or down to, excuse me, downloaded or uploaded to the watch in advance, and then the watch can still notify you without the phone being nearby. But most of these others, of course, have to have that connectivity. Um, anyway, I, maybe I'm 
uh, missing the, the point of this. No, I, I think there's going to be uh, 150 players in this space, and, and I won't be able to track them all. I know if you, if you want a really good, good site to go check out the latest in smartwatches, Smartwatch FM, <laughs> you're welcome, <laughs> is, uh, is, is a tool I actually use uh, frequently. Um, but everyone's going to have some very specific functions out there, as we're, as we're saying. If that's, if that's the appeal that works in your function, perfect. Then that might be the right watch. For, uh, no single smartwatch. It won't be, I clearly see in this market, it won't be two or three players as in traditional technology. It'll be many companies uh, offering many different products. Actually, let me get yours and then we'll get yours next. So, start with the glasses. Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, Just one. <laughs> I didn't understand. Subsume I, I, trackers? Or <coughs> I didn't understand at all. Will the smartwatch subsume trackers, activity trackers? Okay. Okay. Will activity trackers? Yeah. Oh, so you're talking the M7 processor in the, in the new 5S? Sure. Yeah. Fascinating for us. Uh, the second question is, you know, uh, you talked about SIM card in your watch. What happens to battery life? What happens to security concerns? What happens to business models with operators? How, how will that work? I'll start with the first one. So I, uh, the first one is, will the smartwatch subsume fitness track yeah. functionality? I think that's what the, the focus on. Anyone want, you guys want to tackle that? No, I, I, was it, our phone's going to take that over from the device. No. So it's actually. Okay, okay. So, you heard it correctly. Okay. The phones took over MP3. Got it, got it, got it. Navigation device. Yep. Will the same thing happen here? Got it. In the watch and track. I, I think it's fascinating. Um, I've, I've been looking at that M7 processor in there. What this does is basically if you're carrying a 5S, you may not realize it, but everything you do, every step you take, everything is monitored. Um, I've got like the police going in my head. Every step you take, I'll be watching you. Um, it's, so when you load up, we loaded a pedometer app the other day to play with it and see if it would shoot notifications out to our wrist, and it actually pulled the last week of activity in the phone, which a little bit creepy, but as long as you know it's there, um, we find that fascinating. We'd love to we'd love to build around that and see what the what that what can do. So you know we're, we play with it in the lab. We play with a number of different features in the lab. Um, is that the only device? My question to that when we talk about it is, how often do I leave the phone on the desk and walk around the office? And I, I leave my my desk, my laptop, my phone. I walk around when I get a notification. Oh, I grab a call and then walk over and grab my phone. Um, I think it's interesting. I, I don't think we have an answer to that yet. I know certainly they are looking at it. Uh, it would be great to know just, just a level of how much activity do I have going on. I think the second question is interesting. I think you're getting at does the smartwatch, if it absorbs a SIM card and you can actually use it as a phone, what are the, the resulting implications for the, the carrier ecosystem, et cetera? So I think that's a really interesting question. Stan? Yeah, I, I, didn't, I only said I think it's going to happen. I believe very strongly it's going to happen. I know people are thinking about it happening. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know what the impacts will be on the ecosystem. I, you know, it's not the world I live in. Uh, maybe I should be thinking that far ahead uh, from that standpoint. We're not there. I'm not, I've got a thousand other short-term issues to address. Uh, you know, how to get on more Best Buy shelves, things like that. So I'm not, uh, and nor my engineers, heavily thinking about the carrier ecosystem <laughs> and uh, battery life of SIM card. I, I think probably the technology is not quite there yet for some of those things to happen. But I think that there will be a lot of people and a lot of money spent working on it. I think the, the small companies like ours will validate the market. Uh, others come into it. The large companies uh, coming in already. And uh, that there will be hundreds of millions of dollars poured into this, this wearables market. And they'll figure things out that we haven't done. But I. I I can't say that I know, I'm, I'm sure just by asking that question, you know a lot more about that ecosystem than I do. Um, because it's not, just like with Andy, it's not part of our world at this point. And we don't have to have it be part of our world at this point. I just believe, and I know that we need to be prepared. We, we can't expect the watches we have it today and design it to be what we're going to be building five years from now. Uh, that doesn't mean I have to all figure it all out. I'd have to get too many people in the know right now. I'm looking a year and a half ahead. Uh, but I think it's going to be there, and uh, we'll see what, what that means. Well, last question, last poll I want to ask is this is, a, I think, going to be kind of a, 
a religious debate over the next few years around smartwatches, standalone versus companion smartwatch. Um, who here would want a smartwatch that actually act, can act as a phone and have phone capabilities? Raise your hand. Very few. Okay, interesting. Interesting. So most people, who, who would not want any phone functionality be able to make a phone call in their smartwatch? So, okay, most people. Interesting. Who does not want a smartwatch? <laughs> I actually want to ask that question. I don't see a single, uh, I see three, okay. Beautiful, three, four, five. Question, sir? Who are your customers today? 20 to 35 year old men and women for our watch. About even? Um, hard to say, we're still learning. The holidays, you know, it's, it's really fun to see those sales come in every day. Uh, it, it's, it's exciting. Um, uh, in the Kickstarter realm, it was heavily dominated by men, but I think that's who dominate Kickstarter. Uh, at least they did a year ago, before the planters, uh, you know, started showing up. Things like that. Uh, so I, I don't think we know yet. Probably a little more male skewed than female. But the, the uh, uh, to this lady's question a while ago, we have pursued the female audience with designs, far more female designs on our product than male, and uh, and they're selling. So at least there are women interested. And I think you know a lot like the idea of uh, uh, the, the the general value proposition of uh, getting these notifications and keeping their phone in their purse. At, lunch with friends or on the go, whatever, and seeing what's going on. It's, it's a simple concept, really, uh, and, uh, and uh, some like it, some don't. But when you've got you know, as many smartphones out there as you do, it doesn't take much impact uh, in the market to sell a lot of watches, so it's pretty fun. Yeah, from our side, now, if I put on my, my 10 years for an analyst firm hat, um, I can't give you the exact demographic. I can speak to it anecdotally. Um, and in our Kickstarter campaign, it was very heavily iOS skewed, male 20 to 20, 20 to 40. Um, same uh, demographics uh, on the male side. Um, today, we're seeing a lot of uh, purchase uh, by by women. Uh, what I don't know, and I'm about to run some some studies on this, is are they purchasing for themselves or for someone else? And that's the that's the key. To men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> men are paying attention. Oh. <laughs> Sir, uh, your hand raised. Why is now the time for the smartwatch with all these predecessors? Yeah. Go mainstream. Okay. It's here. It's not necessarily the watch. It's the advances we're seeing here, the, the Pavlovian response we have to the hundreds of beeps, dings, and clicks, uh, and the ability for us to just extend those out. Again, not every notification is, is, the, is uh, equal, but if we look at that, the advances here are allowing us to bring information in a way that was never possible. If you look at the... Uh, uh, look at the old Microsoft watch. That was a one-way communication channel. Now we have bi-directional communication. Now we have uh, operating systems that are fully supporting uh, smartwatches. It's the advance of the ecosystem, not necessarily the watch. Uh, by the way, do you still have the Transformers watch? Because I've been trying to find one for my kid. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, right there. Oh, smartwatch.fm. It's run by a, 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 this bright analyst named Michael. I didn't pay him enough. <laughs> okay. So, can you guys talk about, because usually it's engineers in a room, can you talk about some of the artists out there? So you're, you're really deep into what's happening, but are there some artists, some people that are using the technology in a way that, you, that haven't been anticipated, things that you've seen that are really unique and outside of, you know, just being an analyst and having to sell the watches, but... Um, 
when technology is created, it's you know it's never used for what it was intended. You know, SMS being a good example. So, what are you seeing out there that maybe artists are using it in a new way, or or people are doing unique things that you hadn't anticipated that may be in the future? Well, I think uh, I'll just start. I think um, the new artist oftentimes is the app developer. So, I, I do think um, by opening up software platforms, you're seeing interesting stuff. And I'm not going to push Pebble, but Pebble uh, has very much in the last six months been pushing their software platform and trying to get people to foster. And, it, and you guys are both coming out with SDKs. I would think fostering the creativity of smart developers is going to be huge in that regard. Not, and you can answer his question the way he directed it, but what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Sam, I'll let you go first. Uh, well, I was going to say, we, um, I don't think we have enough feedback yet, so I can't give you any great artist applications. I can say uh, we have uh, some with disabilities that it's exciting to see them using it. Uh, one, uh, you know, a, a situation uh, where we're, it's kind of in, in our own little beta uh, with a, a bl blind uh, young man being able to use that now as an easier way to get out voice commands for his watch and do a lot of different things. Uh, and uh, our, I'll just say with our, just to expand a little bit about where we're going with the voice command, we're, we are right now totally dependent upon Siri and, uh, and also you know, S Voice and Google Now and such. But we, a short press on the top button does the same as pushing your button on your iPhone or whatever to get that. A long press, though, on the top is, uh, is going to be sending a signal to get to our own cloud voice command service, which opens up our SDK. And that's where we'll be launching early next year. Uh, and that will get into home controls. It'll say, you know, at, at night, you just push that and secure the home. And uh, blinds close, uh, lights dim, locks on doors, things like that. I mean, that, so uh, th with that application, you're going to open up a whole new world of, of uh, options for the watch being the touch point into uh, someone's life. Uh, how artists are going to use it, I don't know yet. But it'll, there's, there's a, lot, uh, a, a lot of open greenfield opportunity out there. By artists, I mean hackers. Yeah, we you know that we don't we don't yet have it out there. We have so. time for one more question. Uh, that gentleman in the gray shirt, you've been you, you yeah, go ahead. <laughs> That is a fantastic question. I, I think, uh, I'm going to jump in. We're wannabe fashion companies. Clearly, you made yes. the point today. Technology company that wants to be more fashion focused. Um, we'd love to think fashion. Frankly, there's a real constraint on fashion when you put a big honking PCB board in there that you cram everything on and you go 16 ways to sundown and try to figure out how to get everything on there. You still have a pretty big watch. We're fortunate that big watches are in style these days. So we, we went analog. I think our next, uh, if, if anyone's at CES, they'll see some things uh, uh, from us that I think are more attractive than what we've done to date. But a lot of people think what we have is the coolest watch I've ever seen. So fashion's in the eye of the beholder. We want to be fashionable. Uh, and I would say balance for us. Well, you guys? You'll certainly see lifestyle plays from us. I wouldn't even say fashion. I would think more lifestyle. Give these guys a big round of applause. Um,